Yeah, what's going on, guys? All right, you read that title, so uh, yeah, let's just talk about my mental health. Yay. For some reason, it looked like that was going slower for some reason. I don't know. That's weird. Yeah, so like, so let's do an update on it because like a lot of people, because I know I, I did videos about like the ketamine treatment and um, all those other things. So the title is going to probably be like my mental health, like ketamine, mushrooms, or SSRIs. <laughs> okay, so here's uh, the, 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 the quick answer is not doing ketamine anymore. You know, that's super expensive. The place is... Don't cover it. It's five hundred dollars a pop. Last time I probably didn't have like a very good. I think I had like an adverse reaction to it. Actually, um, I tried tons and tons of different SSRIs. Uh, nothing re fucking worked at all. It was awful. I could barely even do the time to, you know, the onset time of like two to four weeks, four to six weeks ish for whatever stuff. Cause like. I did TMS, actually, to get rid of my depression. Um, forgot that. I should put that in the title as well, I guess, because forgot about that. Um, TMS, look it up. It's uh, like something with me. I didn't really look it up at all. I didn't really know what it is, to be honest with you. I just did it. Um, my mom told me about it, and I was like, okay, insurance covers it. Uh, so they, like, scan the brain or whatever, and they zap into a certain area of where, like, your depression is or whatever. I guess it worked. I guess, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not really sure. I guess it did. Uh, but we can go through like what I have after I explain like what, or maybe we should just do that. feels like I should explain kind of what I have going on. So I had depression and anxiety. My anxiety was super terrible. People hate when I touch this microphone. I love that people hate that. Um, and like terrible anxiety. And so the... TMS actually would make my anxiety worse, but take away the depression. They did some kind of wrong with it. Not really wrong, but I guess it just kind of increased my anxiety and it can do that. And then they'll like switch to the right side, but they didn't switch to the right side to mitigate the anxiety or something. What, because it was like based off of like, I would be like, how, how do you feel? Like, do you feel this way? How many days a week? You know, the stupid questions they ask you if you've been through the stuff, you know what I mean? Like, some days, several days, all days. It's like, what? What is some days? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's stupid. Uh, so that might have increased my anxiety a little bit. We tried ketamine, I think, before that. And that, I, for some reason, just didn't go well. I just wasn't really just doing well at all till recently, right? Um and I'm not fucking sure why. I mean, like, we, you have to find what works for you, I guess, right? So if you're, uh, like, I'm super SSRI resistant. So with everything I would take, it would always be, like, I would always feel the worst parts of it, I guess. Like, I, in the beginning, I would, like, like, there's always onset effects that you get from SSRIs and stuff. But, like, they would be so terrible for me. You can get a gene swab test or whatever, like a swab for whatever to see what is like in the green, yellow, or red. Red you don't take, yellow might work with you. Green is what you should do, even green. Things would make me feel terrible. Like I've, one of my last fucking psychiatrists fucking gave me something in the red, but that none of them have ever done a gene or just a swab test. I don't know what it's called, but like a swab test to tell you what things you should take. That lady's a cunt. I gave her two uh, one-star reviews because she's a fucking piece of shit. Actually, I wish I knew her name. Uh, for real though, she sucks. Um, so depression, anxiety, right? So, so we, we did get rid of the depression with the, um, TMS that did work, but the increased anxiety, right? So I looked into after everything wasn't working and you can't stay on benzos forever. Right. Um, I looked into other thing, you know, I knew psilocybin and you know, academy and stuff like that. So psilocybin is what is in mushrooms uh, there's like studies done in 85% of terminally ill patients um, who take psilocybin and have anxiety and depression. If they have en take enough, which is like two to two and a half grams usually or whatever, uh, to have a godlike experience. If they have enough to have a godlike experience, uh, which is usually like, uh, well, if they have it to have a godlike experience, 85% of people will have no more depression and anxiety uh that even worked with some woman who had cancer prior but had so much anxiety about getting it again she did the psilocybin and, and it fucking worked so um that is the thing 
the most fascinating thing ever was the psilocybin, right? I did penis envy mushrooms. People usually think that's like a joke that I'm saying when I call them penis envy mushrooms. Now look it up. Those are like super strong ones. Uh, you probably won't find those. This isn't like, like there's a, you, you could go to, it's FDA approved, right? To go, like there's doctors who do psilocybin treatment. I pro, I wouldn't go to a doctor. This is what worked for me. All right. Uh, so I kind of documented it a lot. I haven't looked or even scrubbed through the footage at all, really. It's like two or three hours, maybe, of recording. There's like four hours missing of somewhere. It's crazy. I, I'll explain my mushroom trip entirely in a podcast. But I want to talk. That's not what this is about, right? But what it's about is how it helped. Because it makes you look it like into yourself, right? It breaks you down. It has. A, it's a voluntary ego breakdown, right? Is that That's what the taking that much does or the ketamine worked the first time when if you watch my video about it the first treatment worked because i let it just completely fucking you know i just let it take over and i had a complete ego breakdown and like I, like godlike experience like where you feel like you found the answer right like but with ketamine you feel like and then when you get out of it you can't remember and you can't talk and stuff and you're you know i just i ended up not really liking ketamine after a while actually like you i had to text my mom like pee you know like you can barely see you can't talk you're like you have to pee you're just like uh and then you're wheeling past your mom you're just like i always flick her off it's hilarious uh but uh scott standing up and the world is spinning and you're like Ugh, it's it sucks i don't know it's it's worth it but then you know after a while you're like fuck man and it's 500 dollars each time so my psilocybin one, I mean, was far more intense than <laughs> ketamine, but I could talk right, a lot. It freaked my mom the fuck out, right? Because uh, I'm, I'm staying at my mom's place right now, currently saving up for. I think if you guys haven't, if I haven't even explored with this idea on a podcast yet, but I don't think I've like talked about it. Where I think I'm going to be moving. Not permanently ever because Airbnb has things that you could do like a minimum of like a month or like three months. So I'm going to do like three, probably three months in Cali, maybe like West Hollywood. And then maybe I want to like switch up, but stay in Cali still. For, I'm going to stay there for like six months or longer and then come back to Chicago during the good time. Like rent something out nice here for a little bit, you know, and bounce around and stuff because fucking why not? They're furnished. I'll just bring my gear. There you go. That's awesome. That's just the plan right now. So just working, doing this, everything until that culminates. I mean, fucking COVID. COVID sucks. It's fucking everything up. So like, not like you'd want. Not like I like I right now. I wouldn't even want to be in the city at all. Like, what's there to do? That would suck, dick. For real. And, uh, like, isn't California shut down or something? So, I don't know. I don't really know shit. All I know is people still wearing masks, and we have wine box poppy masks. <laughs> oh, what's good? I'm, uh, it's uh, on Teespring, okay? Uh, I, I think we're going to do separate merchandise for this channel and that channel. But we do have the, like, EO. You know, if you just, if you just watch this channel, you'll know what just EO is. You probably won't. Are you cuz like wine box probably is like really no association to this channel really. Um but there's some cool shit. You'll see that involves yeah. Uh we'll we'll try and integrate maybe we could just use the the merch shelf on both. I'm not sure how it works like that, but you'll see it's uh teespring.com/stores/winebox-poppy is the merch store. As of right now, there's one pair of leggings and one mask. After this, I'm going to upload another mask and maybe uh, something else. But, yeah, if you want to check that out or if you don't want to do that, stuff below. Links down below for everything, honestly. Um, but back to the mental health. So that had a real breakthrough, you know. It brought me down to my core of what I really am, the mushrooms. Uh, voluntary ego breakdown, you know, everything. Every, it just brings you down to you, 100% you, Uh it also helped me work with my self-talk as well, right? And, like, the shadow. You know, if you have to... Uh, Carl Jung's... Is it Jung? Jung? Whatever. What, Jung, uh, the shadow. I listen to Jordan Pearson. I've never listened. So Jordan Pearson talks about the shadow and stuff. Integrating the shadow and stuff. 
I would look that up. I can't. I don't really have the vocabulary to explain that, to be honest with you. Um, but I'm a person who has terrible self-talk and stuff like that. Like, uh, like super harsh on myself. Really, uh, I expect way too much from myself. I, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't give myself a break. Way too hard on myself about everything. 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 Uh, it's terrible. Like that's where like if it, when I have some anxiety a little bit, right? Because right now I'm right now I'm perfect, and so I'm getting off of uh, benzodiazepines because of the mushroom trip took away the anxiety. You know, it, it showed me what I, what I truly have. Uh, to me, obviously, this sounds narcissistic uh, to say out loud, and I I referenced that quite a bit in when I was documenting it, right? When I was talking about it, but all it showed me was my core was. Uh, all I am is intellect and humor. That's all I have. No anxiety. I was like, there's no anxiety at all, right? Which is crazy, right? Because you can have feeling, but because anxiety is fear, and I'm not afraid of anything, right? Except for spiders. I have arachnophobia. I might document that before like you know stand up takes off and then i have to go on tour to australia right like that's the only fucking reason i would ever get rid of my arachnophobia god because i would do the one where they fucking force you to touch it you guys would want to see that either way fuck i'll do it one day um but it's like a good you know comedians travel everywhere so uh but like australia has the fucking spires the size of uh, dinner plates it's crazy you need a fucking sword, bro. And they probably wouldn't let you bring one, to be honest. Uh, and kangaroos, you can see, if you open up the pouch, yeah, it's just them, the bones and organs. How are they alive? Like, not even by, like, how is that a thing? But, like, because, I don't know, we have assholes that are whole, so is my mouth. I don't know. But, like, how are you? Kill them. That's pretty much what I'm saying. It's fucking insane. It scared me a lot. <sighs> Look it up. Okay. Uh, back to my mental health. So, uh, depression induced ADHD, by the way, uh, where I can't, where it's like, not like where it's, so it's different. It's weird. So I'm not even sure what actually ADHD is type shit. Uh, I mean, I called my doctor and I was like, Hey, I bought Adderall for my friend. I, I need, I know I need to go back to the mushroom thing for a little bit in a second, but like, I was like, Hey, got Adderall for my friend it worked. It's helping. And he's like, all right prescription i was like you crazy bro <laughs> all right uh but the yeah so all, all i so what i figured out during the mushroom trip was um and i'll get back to that all in a second as well or should i just end with this so with the adderall i'm just going to use it till i build habits of being able to get back into life because it's i don't know when i wake up i feel hungover and disgusting i have like stuff like insomnia so I take like a sleeping pill and stuff at night. So that's probably, and I'm cool with that. Like the hangover that I can deal with. I just need this shit to like, get the fuck up, bitch. You know, it's, I don't know. And get like, I don't know. I, it, it helps me refocus. It's going to help me build the habits to refocus. I definitely don't want to stay on anything forever, but that's something I don't mind staying on forever. Cause when I used to take it, I would feel high. It would feel like cocaine for four hours, but now it doesn't feel like cocaine at all, which is lame as fuck, but it helps. So that means I need it type shit. You feel me? Okay mushroom thing so it showed me that i was only intellect and humor right so but even the humor at the worst points and deepest darkest points of me can escape but intellect and iq is crystallized in every human being actually so that's pretty much what every human being has is always going to be their intellect and what else makes them up right this will probably show you everything about you but really all i truly am is my intellect and comedy or my humor, like my my the, my the way I view the world, my, my humorous, you, you know what humor fucking means, okay? Um, yeah, and that's, I think that's true 100%, right? Because those two combined is who I am, 100%. Um, because I can go full humor, or I can go full intellectual type thing with this, and that's... You know, an intellectual, just look at the definition, right, of like look, looking inward um, and learning and asking questions and learning about society inwardly and stuff like that. It's not just about like, I don't know, just, it, it, it just sounds cunty to like say stuff like that. So I kind of feel like I have to put like a, see how stupid I am? I don't even know what the fuck you would put in a book. Would it be, 
Would you put an asterisk and be like, I feel like a cunt. Like, I don't know. When I write a book for no reason, I'll fucking find out, I'm sure. And use words that uh, I have to look up to make me sound smarter, like a plum. Yeah. Actually, I'm a re- I'll, I'll tell the story one day. Somebody remind me to tell the story about a plum. But it showed me, so the intellect showed me, um, you don't have, like, I was like, I don't have anxiety. There's, that's not in me at all. There's not, like, depression wasn't in me at all. There was no anxiety. So I was like, what the fuck is the problem that, like, so then, there you go, right, the answer's right there, actually. The answer is in the question. What's the problem then? And that's what I asked myself. So let's, let's simplify this. Let's look at it. So what I somehow came to the conclusion of was, Mark, you don't, you don't have anxiety. You just think there's a problem and you're always trying to solve it. And it's frustrating you. You just, have a pr- you just think you have a problem and you're trying to solve it. There is no problem. Right? So if I'm ever anxious or have that somewhat feeling of anxious, I go, what's the problem? Let's look at it from an intellectual perspective. Let's, let's, let's think about it. What's the problem? What's, what are you afraid of? Oh, nothing. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Right? Um, there are times where, of course, that can't work, and that has happened currently. It's happening currently with getting off of benzos. I'm getting off of benzos, benzodiazepines, which are like Xanax, uh, Clonopin, shit like that. Um, because, you know, I saw what happened to Jordan Peterson. He got, he developed a benzodiazepine dependency and that is not fucking good uh and doctors he, th- he so to me jordan peterson usually what he says is uh fact he's not gonna really say shit that isn't not true right uh so he thinks that the benzo epidemic epidemic might be worse than the opioid because especially with this covid thing man people are probably i don't know and yeah, I mean, even it makes sense because people get benzos young. People get addicted to benzos young because of this hip hop shit, man. A lot of people are already addicted to benzos. Like, I've known people who have gotten off benzos already, like that were not, you know, types like not like or either not prescribed it or prescribed it. Like, that's already happened at younger stages. They just throw benzos like crazy. Oh, you have anxiety? Bah, benzos. Oh, you have more anxiety? Bah, 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 benzos. Like, same with opioids. Oh, you're hurting? Bah, opioids. Yeah, like that happened to me when I, I mean, like, I had to had back surgery and i had to take uh hydro of course like they took a fucking part of my fucking spine like oh god so i had like part of my spine uh so i have sciatica like l uh, l5 s1 i think area or whatever uh disc pushing out car accident exploded the disc parts of the disc out making the sciatica worse they had to go in there cut out it's like a disectomy or something like that micro disectomy or something i don't know so when i woke up i think i started crying i was like because like right when you wake up and you're the part that controls your whole entire body is your lower your lower controls everything right that just got sliced open and you're like ah right and so <laughs> that's my best fake cry and you so they're just like yeah take uh three hydro you know every i took like six a day it was like two hydro every four hours four to six hours so six a day for 30 days 180 pills stop boom you cannot you know just stop cold turkey i was looking for that's what i was looking for that's why i said bah, boom i was waiting for it cold turkey just nothing uh that sucked dick you can't do that with benzos though but that sucked dick right sweating like I just like oh shit like I mean I didn't like buy it or get it from it I was like oh wow that sucks whoa they don't they, didn't, they don't tell you that by the way they don't go hey but this is gonna suck dick you should watch it I mean you still wouldn't watch it though because that was the best thirty days of my life are, are you kidding me that was awesome I just got fat ate Cheetos and was constipated the whole time I don't give a fuck I played ESO Elder Scrolls Online I played all I don't know in the first eleven days one hundred and forty four hours of it I was just so fucking opioided. Oh, I don't want to say heroin out because like I, that's not that's got to be so crazy. Uh, this was just fucking hydro pills. But I was like, this is awesome. Like everything was great, even though if the game was boring as fuck. You know what I'm saying? You had a good time. So I'm not trying to convince you to take opioids. They're bad, very bad for you. <clears throat> that was just dope. Uh, if you have an injury though, and you need 
go ahead. Uh, have have fucking fun. Take take them as needed, right? As they say, for those thirty days, you're gonna gain twenty five pounds and shit out Cheetos. It's gonna be worth it. Um, but you can't just stop taking benzos, right? Because they have the same. They use they go with the same receptors and stuff as alcohol, right? And alcoholics, fuck. I don't know if it's worse with alcoholism. I'm going to go with it is 100% uh, worse than a benzodiazepine dependency. Uh, but you could have seizures. Like, if you cold turkey stop, the likelihood of you having seizures if you have been doing them long term is very high, right? So right now we're tapering as f- uh, as fast as possible without seizures, right? Um, I'm going a little bit faster than he recommended, to be honest with you. He wanted me to go like, you know, like three clonopin and then two and a half clonopin, like three clonopin a week and then two and a half clonopin a week and then two and then one and a half. I'm like, I don't do halves, okay? I don't fucking do halves, okay? If I need a half, I'll take a half, but I, I don't do halves. So we're doing two for the next seven days and one and fucking nine. Uh, so right now, yes, yeah, is the clonopin and boost bar is what I'm on. I don't know if it's called boost bar, but that shit, I don't like that shit. But I just noticed that I could break them in half. They used to like make me feel numb. But it's there to help with the withdrawal symptoms of getting off of benzos. And the psilocybin is what got me off of everything. I'm not on anything else at all. So I smoke weed and CBD. I like a lot more CBD than I used to. That helps a fuck lot. Like if you smoke weed, like weed will definitely... Too much THC in the system is will fuck you up, low key. All right, you really do, and it, it's better <clears throat> to have CBD in it too, man. It's like CBD, like if you have you smoked just a CBD, I thought that shit was gay until I did it. I was like, I feel pretty alert right now, bro. <laughs> like, sh- shit, I was shit talking this for way too long. No cappuccino, bro. Try it out. Add some CBD to your shit. Mix it in. It'll make your weed last longer. Fuck it. Um. Might help your health too, uh, and of course, with you know, a lot of it's on you as well. Like, let's say we're going through this journey together, and we're at the same point right now. And what I'm doing right now is with getting off this benzos. I have these recurring. The th- everything that f- was fixed r- comes back, and you get very scared. Like yesterday, past two days were hell. Uh, this is being recorded. Actually, it doesn't matter the day of when this is recorded, but my past two days. We're fucking hell. Uh, back to square one. It felt like. It felt like. I'm sure it wasn't equivalent, and I'm sure it wasn't the same feeling, but it felt like that, right? And that's very scary. You get scared. That's scary. That's what I, I am afraid of that. Um, I know I've gotten out. I mean, all I would do if I ever develop these problems again um to me psilocybin is the way to do it and when i did the psilocybin peanuts envy mushrooms like okay i took this shit super seriously i know people who do like mushrooms to like party and stuff like that yeah i don't think these are really party drugs in my opinion son uh so this is how i did i literally would take these and like i knew i knew after this time this amount, this is going to be it. And I actually bought a ton more after, but I don't have any more police officer. Okay. So, um, <laughs> I, uh, would always thank them. I'd be like, because I had a, I would look at them very spiritually and religiously. So I don't care if you think this is current dead ass, go ahead and take a lot of mushrooms and go in without any, uh, good mindset. Dare you. Okay. So, I'd be like, this is fucking for me and the mushrooms because trust me, after you take this amount, you're going to think these are fuck, these have powers. I'm telling you. <laughs> it sounds so stupid, but it's the truth. Uh, I'd be like, thank you for whatever you're going to show me. I respect, you know, this drug. I'm not abusing this drug. I'm using it and I, as a religious pervert. Like, I, I'm taking whatever, like, thank you for whatever lesson you're going to show me, good or bad. I'm willing to receive the message. Whap in the face doesn't taste as bad as people say grow the fuck up grow up eat a piece of chocolate fuck it's not bad uh if you got nausea pills i'd highly suggest those because the purge is gonna come son i couldn't i couldn't 
couldn't purge and when I knew I had to. But uh, I was like, sorry, world. Nausea pills. Get fucked, you know? My bad, G, but we are developed past you mushrooms. We take nausea pills. Um, but that really... it. Now, godlike experience, I feel like somebody's going to ask me, did I have a godlike experience? So, godlike is hard to no fuck no of course not um the first time ketamine i had was a godlike experience of extreme euphoria and no body no ego uh so that was more godlike than this this was more aware and everything um so to really before to to top this off without talking about all of it because i i want to make a video about it but the you know with what happened was like, and I've asked my friends, my friends have had the same experience, but like I literally had the eyes of a child. Okay. And it was the most beautiful, amazing moment of my entire life. It was the most important day of my life. The day I took these, this amount of mushrooms, this amount of psilocybin, it truly, truly was, um, you know, I, I said, I will never take them again until I need them. Right. Um, I think, you know, delaying gratification of the most beautiful thing ever, or I might not ever take that again, you know, even though I'm going to do DMT soon. Hopefully my homie hit me about it and I'm about it. Definitely on that type of time. I'm trying to be like Joe Rogan's son, but like, ah, uh, nah, I do want to try that. But like with this though, if I, unless I feel like I'm looking for something that I can't figure out, this is a lot to decompress throughout the year. Um, you need it two day two days to to de decompress your I don't know this ch things change but then recently I noticed it's weird how things I don't know it depends on the type of person you are but if you think things everything happens for a reason I have that tattooed right and that's a hard thing for someone you know like I'm an atheist type shit right where I don't believe in the the political form of God I don't think there is a higher power like that i don't think that is plausible i don't think that there is a mystical th being controlling things right like one entity god you know that's how i see atheism right as like I don't, I don't subscribe to any of the religions at all is what, but I'm a relig very religious person towards myself and these, mo see, things that I think and I re see as or require a religious or spiritual meaning. I mean, like this kind of show, I mean, like, I don't know, it showed that there's more than just us, and I definitely know that, and we know there's more dimensions than just the dimension we're in and things like that, okay? I do believe that there are things that are out there that aren't us type thing. When I talk about this fucking mushroom trip, you're going to see it just becomes evident. It becomes evident. It's very fucking evident, right? Uh, especially if you subscribe to the idea of time has happened, everything that has happened will happen, has already happened, time has happened already, you're just experiencing time as it goes on, because we can experience time, but it's already happened. We just experience it, right? So your death has already occurred. You're just experiencing everything that leads up to it, even though you think you're... It type sh but that's a weird thing to play on. I also don't have the vocabulary for that. These are a lot of ideas that I'm working on but to get back to the everything happens for a reason and i had to bring up the atheism because that that could seem like a contradiction right that everything happens for a reason yet being and also wearing crosses but <laughs> um they just look cool uh saying that everything happens for a reason but not but, but i just it, i do think the world i think the world and the universe is a thing and i know it's a living breathing thing that we're a part of because we ha are made of the same things we're made of stardust. We're made of the same exact things that everything else is made out of. <coughs> what? Like, there's there's no argument that everything coincides, right? Matter cannot be created nor destroyed. 
That is a fa- fucking fact, okay? Um, it's like, like you know what I'm saying? Um, that you cannot create something out of nothing, right? Um, and you can't take away, right? So if you use a fossil fuel, it will be put out and into the air as something else, right? It's being turned and used into something else, right? Um, so thing, you know, you know what I mean with that way. Like even if energy is used up, don't fucking dive into that, fucking please. But you cannot make something out of nothing, right? Um, so back to uh, I'm really bad at this, especially. But I fucking took a clonopin, but I'm uh, you know clonopin makes you really bad with memory. So the part of where everything happens for a reason. We kind of oh yeah, I get signs. It's like I needed to hear this right away because I was really leaning hard on the new perspective change that that were, that the rebirth gave me, right? Of the having the eyes of a child of the, that the mushrooms gave me a brand new perspective. Like I could like I looked onto this loft that I'm on. Where I'm looking at these lights and everything. I couldn't tell you what anything was. Everything with life was beautiful and amazing and interesting. Right. There's no fear of anything because nothing was anything because a newborn has no idea of anything. But then I noticed that I was a 25 year old with the eyes of a fucking child. And it was fucking fascinating. Beautiful. I cried 100 percent. Not like crazy cry, but I was like, you know, the tear just like of just pure beauty of just at awe of. Looking at things that are normal. And being so curious again and being so. It was a rebirth, 100 percent, to to experience that, and to let, to delay that gratification, I think, is very noble. I think to chase that is dangerous, because that definitely was the best day of my life. Like I said, so I think trying to chase that is dangerous, in my opinion. But do what you will, motherfucker. <laughs> I don't care. I'm going for um. So, I. Th- it's a, it's a right now we're going to see what happens after all the benzos are out but i think um with i you know having a therapist uh doing talk therapy and stuff and dealing with the problems that i i do have that are probably like we're dabbling with like uh borderline personality disorder is kind of what we're thinking um i'm sharing that not because I feel like I have to, and I definitely don't have to tell you that. It's just for transparency. It's for, I don't know. Um, And that might not even be what I have. We're just, but it seems to fit the fucking bill pretty well. Uh, If you, like, I've heard Jordan Peterson talk about it, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's fucking spot on. So (laughs) it sounds about right. Um, Like a disagreeable, narcissistic type person is very likely to develop a personality disorder i think um like somebody like a hard-working disagreeable narcissistic person uh and narcissism obviously is not a bad thing right because actors uh youtubers anybody who does anything like this has to have somewhat sort of narcissism i think there's something great about them to do this thing right like people want to hear what i have to say type thing so that's obvious that should be evident uh the hard-working thing evident um the uh i forgot what the other fucking thing is who gives a shit but we're working on that um that's a talk therapy thing though that's the thing where you only work on it cognitively no medicine um a lot of this can be fixed with um i I feel like like ssrs they say it works for a lot of people but i feel like it doesn't man i don't know i just don't feel like that's true I haven't, I don't know, I haven't really met anybody who it's worked l- really well for, like, long-term, or they haven't felt like zombies or something. Where, you know, what my shit that I was on made me feel different. It just wasn't, when it, even when I was at the, be- like, it, I don't know, it just wasn't the same. Um, also, becoming an adult and having major life changes and things like that and trying to rely on the past map, my br- last ma- brain map, right? Because nothing is the same. Right, because I am now 25, prefrontal cortex is starting to fully develop. Um, 
don't I no longer have my father. I don't have I don't, can't ask him questions, even though I never really could <coughs> like prior. <coughs> I tried to keep too much eye contact on that one cough. I was like, look at the camera at all times. Um, but like, you know, fucking I think I probably talked about this, though. You don't become an adult until your father dies or until you understand that you know more than your parents. Like your parents don't know shit. Right. Like uh, something else Jordan Peterson says is like. Like, if you still value your parents, like, why do you value your parents' opinion more than somebody else's fucking random, like, random parents? They're just adults, right? They Like, I get they know you better to an extent, but they still don't know what's best for you. They don't know everything about you. You don't tell your parents everything, right? Like, that, so, and, they're, and, like, if you care so much about their opinion more than others, you might still be looking at them as gods and stuff, depending on your age. That's not good at all. Um... I think looking up to anybody's opinion at all really hard taking anybody's opinion as truth is stupid aside from your own right you can like it say I mean if like people were to give me constructive criticism I would look at everything and gather them as a whole and create my own ideal and opinion based off of others and stuff like that but it wouldn't be like it would have to be somebody I really look up to like it would, I mean obviously like if Jordan Peterson gave me an opinion, I would probably be like, really, seriously take a look at it. But the, <laughs> you know, I feel like you know what I'm saying. Like, most people's opinion uh, doesn't mean fucking shit, good or bad, in either direction, actually. Um, I don't think I'm missing anything, because I want to end on something of how that can help for people a lot of people might be dealing with like comments maybe um, or the way people think of them, their opinions of them. Now, it doesn't have to be just you dealing with comments, not with you being bullied. Maybe it's just people, people's opinion of you is bad or something or like anything. Somebody asked me re- re- recently, like I think it's going to be coming up in uh, just my advice about – people having a bad opinion about them so this like that might be more normal than before but also you need to audit what you do maybe it wasn't the last one actually but audit what you're doing maybe you did something bad for them to create a bad opinion of you however opinions of people don't matter the opinion the only opinion that matters is your own right and um i think everybody should 100 percent fully be themselves at all times, right? That's the problem with workplaces. Like, workplaces stifle the individual so hard. Like, when I worked at fucking Nordstrom Rack, sometimes they wouldn't even let us talk while doing stuff. When I worked at Home Depot, they wouldn't let me bend over the counter because I have a bad, a bad back. I was like, fuck you, bro. I'm gonna bend over on this counter. Either you're gonna fire me over this or I'm gonna bend on this counter, asshole. Never got fired over that. I quit that bitch. Fuck Home Depot. Fuck Nordstrom Rack. Both those places suck cock. Man, watch me just lose millions of dollars of sponsorship. I would never want to fucking work with either of them. Imagine me, sponsored by Home Depot. Come and get your lumber that I fucked up one time and I knew it was the wrong lumber. Huge load of lumber. Huge. I was like, oh, shit, that was the wrong wood. Is that the right wood, Mark? Yep. Ship it out. You know why? I got paid like 11 an hour. I don't give a fuck because guess what? That got sent back. Somebody else said, he's like, hey, man, those are wrong wood. I was like, ah, shit, my bad. First day doing that. He's like, yeah, understandable. I get it. It's cool, man. I was like, all right. Problem solved. <laughs> fuck them. Are you kidding me? Oh, God, I got yelled at for letting leaving somebody on hold for a little bit too long. I was like, I, I'm dealing with a lot of shit here for $11 an hour, okay? You're like, you can't leave a fucking person on hold for that long. I'm like, I don't give a fuck about this person. I'll tell this person to eat my dick. Hey, Home Depot, eat my penis. That would probably fucking bring them a lot of business, honestly. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> Imagine, like, a McDonald's working with me. I know uh, your mom's house worked with them, but, like, and then lost the sponsorship. Do they still have the sponsorship? I know they got it back, but did they, did, they, did they lose it again? I don't know. Whatever. I'm going on a tangent now, but I'm going to end it with this might help people be themselves more, okay? This is a story I learned from I don't remember fucking who I want to say that Elliot that ask Elliot dude 
I don't know, though. I'm not sure. So, story goes like this, okay? I think I've told this before, uh, and this helps a lot because it, you, the, Gary V says, and this is true, how much you value the good comments is how much you're going to value the bad comments, right? You're going to value them equally. So this is what you should do, okay? Here's the story. There's a bird outside that sings every single day. One morning, a neighbor wakes up and yells, I love your music. I love, I love the sound of your voice. It's amazing. Please don't stop ever. It's so beautiful. Oh, my God. And the bird goes, thank you. I just do what I do. And then the next morning, the bird's singing again, just like he does every single day. And then another neighbor goes, yo, shut the fuck up. That's the most disgusting noise I've ever heard. I hate that shit. Throws a rock. Bird dodges that shit. It's just like, thank you. I do what I do. So no matter what, people say, thank you. I just do what I do. And thank you so much for listening.